Yeah. Yeah. Really? Why? Fine. Better? All right, we're going to kick this off. You all have probably heard his voice. It's kind of, it's not really one of those voices that you can miss because everybody's seen Dragon Ball Z. Most people have seen Naruto. Naruto, I'm sorry. Ugh. I'm tired, sorry, I'm going to wait for a day. <laughs> Most of you have seen Bleach. And who hasn't seen Gordon Lagan at this stage? Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Mr. Kyle Heber. So yeah, so 
start on DBZ, then a few months after that, uh, let's see, the narrator left and I had to replace him. So uh, that was Dale Kelly, and Dale Kelly was the second narrator, placing Doc Harris in the Canadian dub. So now there's, you know guys know there's two dubs, right? There's the one produced in Canada, and there's the one produced in Texas. So the one on DVD and Blu-ray you can get is the Funimation dub. That's what you hear uh, myself and a lot of the Texas cast on Chris Sabat, who's Vegeta and Piccolo and all that. So, we're going to go. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's where that started. Uh, God, from there we did Blue Gender. You would remember that? Yeah. It was cool. It's like Starship Troopers, only serious. <laughs> These giant Brussels sprouts from space come down and it's kind of gory and everything. Yu Yu Hakusho? Yeah! That's my first villain, Parasu, in the Dark Tournament Saga. He fights Kurama, when Kurama goes Yoko Kurama. Um, and I did this very sinister, creepy, yet sexy voice. And then I ended up totally ripping myself off years later when I tried out for this little show called Bleach. And I read this character's description. It's like, he's mysterious, yet friendly. And it's like, I'll just use this voice again. <laughs> Which is actually very similar to any, I, mean, I don't see a lot of older faces here, but there's a classic science fiction movie called 2001, The Space Odyssey. Oh. There's a computer on board. Oh. How? What are you doing, Dave? Stop. It's like, that's totally my inspiration for Eyes and Men, Karasu for that matter. Let's see, what else happened? Kiba, Kiba is basically Gohan's voice, only he's like more feral and wild and it's like, he just wants to go in there and just kick everyone's ass. And he's like, okay. Gohan just wants to have fun and eat. <laughs> like his dad, you know, not pretty like much. Goku. What? Not like Goku. He's not like Goku? Yeah. Goku doesn't want to he eat? Doesn't, he doesn't eat like Goku. Well, he doesn't eat like Goku. <laughs> but, yeah, I guess eventually he became a bookworm, right? <laughs> yeah. Kind of a sad ending, don't you think? <laughs> I'm going to be the most powerful being in the universe. And then Majin Buu absorbs him. Spoiler. <laughs> oh well. Uh, let's see, other shows, other shows. Curry Lagon, coming up. <laughs> Who the hell do you think I am? Yes, great show, great character. Even if I weren't on it, I would fall in love with that show. It's just it's so freaking awesome. And uh, let's see, man. Uh, video games. You guys play games, yeah? yeah. Uh, the biggest game that I've gotten so far is Ryu on Street Fighter. <laughs> Hadouken! Which is Kamehameha, same thing, really. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. Oh man, what else, what else, what else? Big the Cat. Big the Cat, it's minor, but yeah, Big the Cat has like a dozen lines of DS colors. Uh, I think he'll be back for more. What's that? Devil May Cry, yes, I'm the fourth boss you have to beat. He's a giant frog. Oh, <laughs> brothers. Bale and Dagon. And they have, like, girls that hang off yeah, his yeah, tentacles. You know, it's antenna. It's like, oh, Japan. <laughs> <laughs> of course, they electronically process the voice to make it sound super evil and low. If I had known they were going to do that, I wouldn't have blown my voice out in the session. <laughs> if you do that, for any extended amount of time, you will not be able to speak the rest of your life. Really. <laughs> um, and we do that, we do that. And Dragon Ball Z was like the training ground on which most of these RPG and fighting games uh, can be like, if you survive DBZ, you can survive anything. Because, man, you're like, Kamehameha! <laughs> Just keeps yelling and yelling and yelling. Said, so, okay, good, all right, cut. Do it again. <laughs> they edit it all together, so it's like 60 seconds of solid yelling. Man. I guess the big joke about the power-up yells is it's like, man, you're constipated, right? <laughs> Those sayings really gotta poop. It's like, come on, just have some prune juice and sit down. Relax. All would be well. So anyway, yes. Games, stuff, uh, let's see, other other cool projects that I'm on. Hasn't aired yet, but uh, anybody watching Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes? Does that air out here <laughs> at all? Yeah. It's on what? Well, the movie, the live action movie, I'm talking about the cartoon. Yeah, Disney X. The cartoon <clears throat> in the States 
on Disney yeah. XD. Uh, I think the DVDs just started coming out, but I mean, come on, we all have the internet, right? It's like, oh, uh, I don't pirate it all. one like message board or like Facebook and Twitter and you hear you know the Americans talking about all these great services and things don't you feel like like shut up about Netflix shut up about everything we don't have that <laughs> but alas you will just give it time you just yeah the Canadians just got it eh what's that about <laughs> oh, man but you know what I'm I'm so friggin lucky because I get to do something I've always wanted to do. This is literally, I mean, when you ask most voice actors what they, you know, have always wanted to be a voice actor, most of them will tell you, I just want to act. I don't care, on stage, on camera, whatever. I just want to act and be in this awesome creative field. With me, it was literally, I want to get behind a mic and I want to voice animated characters. It started with, e, what's up, Doc? Me, Bugs Bunny. Mel Blanc, my inspiration. The guy who voiced all those classic Looney Tunes characters. I was like seven or eight years old in the 70s. Whoa, man. Yeah, child of the 70s. And I grew up, and the anime I watched back then, Speed Racer, Star Blazers, Battle of the Planets. I mean, really old school. And then high school, uh, Robotech came out. And uh, yeah, it's like, man. So yeah, I wanted to do, I, I was too shy to get on stage and even do this. I couldn't address a room full of people. I was way too shy. It's like, oh man, when you're in a play or you're on camera, you have to memorize a script. Heavens forbid, you know. In voice acting, you never have to do that. Your script's always in front of you. Spoiled. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I mean, even as a DJ, your script, your things that you're talking about, your list of songs that you play, oh yeah, just so you know, to break the magic. When someone requests a song on the radio station, the DJ kind of is like, how do they magically play it within two seconds of the person asking for it? Well, they pre-recorded that call. <laughs> and then they play it back. When it comes up in the hour, I see all the music's already pre-chosen. <laughs> Days in advance. And they do base the playlist based on requests and everything, but unless it truly is a request show, yeah. And then it gets like, oh, let's look for this call when someone from... Uh, Dublin said, hey, I want you to play that awesome Backstreet Boys song. Or that awesome Jonas Brothers or Justin Bieber song. <laughs> but yeah, so voice acting. Awesome sauce in a can. Um, just getting to do something that you've loved and always wanted since you're uh, a little kid. And this is like, this is my big thing. I'm all about positivity and motivating people. So whatever you want to do in life. You want to be a doctor. You want to save the world. You want to be president or prime minister, you want to, you know, you want to move somewhere else and start a farm. It just starts with a dream, a goal, and then saying to yourself, okay, I'm going to take little baby steps towards achieving that goal. And a lot of the obstacles that stop you, what's the number one obstacle you think stops you from achieving some big long-time goal? Money. Money. Yeah. Yeah. Resources. Yeah. Uh, in the case of acting, it kind of is, you know, depending on the type of acting you want to do, you do need to be where the work is. So you're saying to yourself, I really want to work in anime. Well, there's not a big market, I don't think, for um, dubbing anime in Ireland, or the UK for that matter. Not as far as I know, right? Are there British dubs of shows? Mm -hmm. Just US English, right? Okay, all right. And then there's Canadian, too. Um, so, yeah, so you say, all right, I'd have to leave the country, I've got to move over there, that costs thousands of dollars, that's going to, you know, i got to file the paperwork and become a citizen there, and blah, 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 blah. I mean, but it's doable. People do it all the time. It just takes a long time, so you have to be patient. You have to, be, you have to first of all, want it so bad that you will put up with waiting forever, that you will put up with uh, auditioning for things and not getting the part and doubting yourself, going, am I really good for this? Am I cut out for this or do I suck? And then facing all that adversity so that eventually 
maybe, no guarantees, maybe you'll make a little progress. I was able to save up thousands of dollars, now I can move. Okay, what's the next step? Oh yeah, classes, training. I've got I to train in any field to do what I want to do and make money at it. And in that wonderful world of acting, it's all freelance. So it's, there's no job benefits, there's no insurance, there's no guarantee of anything. You only work when they call you. Auditions don't pay, any actor will tell you that. You could audition for a hundred things and not get cast for anything. So how are you gonna pay rent? So you need a plan B, and your plan B quickly becomes plan A. Okay, I need a day job. I need a day job so I can make ends meet, pay the rent, do all that cool stuff, and then okay, I'll pay. Set aside a little money each month, and then I'm going to take these classes so I can do that cool stuff. Like when I went to NomCon and saw those voice actor panels, man, he looks like he's having so much fun, and he gets to wear a dorky hat. And, well, I mean, I can't hear. I'm not going to be judged here, right? This is good. Not necessarily. It's like, oh well. I guess it's like, well, I'm more nerdy than you. I don't know. But if if we all just walked out of the hotel across the street and just down to the city streets, people would look at you funny, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 They'll say, oh, the circus is in town. Someone threatened to stab me on my way. They threatened to stab you? Yep. Why? Why? That's, that's not even an outlandish uniform. It's just, you know, military, full metal alchemist. Well, granted, you do have blue hair. <laughs> I mean, but I mean, a lot of people have different colored hair nowadays. But eh, here we are. Anybody else's lives get threatened on the way to the convention today? Well, cut your feather. I hope you're not like doing weird stuff with that feather. So you're like, I'm tickling random strangers from afar. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Crazy, man. Okay. So yeah. So training, moving. Patience, thick skin, not, not letting it get to you. But you know what? Everyone that wants to become a voice actor is not going to become one. And I'm not, I'm not judging people. I mean, some people just make the personal decision. It's like, you know what? Okay, I took, I did everything I did possible, and it, it, it's just not in the cards. So I'm not cut out for it. Okay? Some people will go to college, get a degree in physics, and end up doing something completely different for their career. I mean, that's just the way life goes. So, but here's the big thing. If it's something you really, really want to do, you really want to do it so bad, I am encouraging you to try it. Trying is better than regretting and wondering what if. Because uh, my parents, bless their souls, I am, they're my heroes. They, they still help me to this day. I'm 42 and they still help me. I mean, that's a good supportive group. It's like, you go do what you want, you follow your dream. We're behind you 100%. And I understand not everyone has a supportive family. It's like if you're sitting and you go to anime conventions and you're drawing fan art and it's like, I want to be an artist and my parents don't believe in that. It's like, get a real job. You're not going to make any money doing that. It's like, that sounds like a challenge to me, huh? It's like, oh yeah? All right. Well, in the meantime, yeah, you got to get that crappy day job. But yeah, but you know, one day maybe you will get published and you'll become a big artist and you'll make lots of money. And then you can say, in your face. And then they'll be much older, and it's like, okay, now I have to pay for your health care. But anyway, <laughs> but yeah, you don't want to. You want to sit there and go, all right, I I have to. Like the old way of doing things was that, ah, okay, I gotta work at a job, and it's just gonna pay the rent and pay the bills, and everything will be okay. But it's like, well, how are you as a person? Are you creatively fulfilled doing what you're doing? If you work at a job 10, 20, 30 years, you gotta love what you're doing, man. I mean, even if you're getting, you know, six figures a year, if you're making, you know, fantastic salary and you're miserable and stressed out, you need to look at life and evaluate and say, okay, I need to do something that won't necessarily make me a lot of money, but will make me happy. And I know this all sounds like cliche stuff, and it's like, why is he talking about all this? It's like, because it's important, it really is. Really doing something that you want to do in life and taking a risk. There's absolutely no guarantee that what you're going to do will work. But get
give it a try. Because it might. It just might. You might go out there, take some classes, network with hundreds of cool actors, eventually meet someone who knows someone. It's like, well, I draw fan art, and maybe one day maybe it would be great if I could work in graphic design in a movie studio. Well, what if you met an actor at a convention who knew someone who knew someone who knew someone who's a graphic designer in a Hollywood studio? This stuff happens all the time. Networking, huge, 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 huge. And I'm not saying, hey, all of you come up afterwards and give me your cards. It's like, follow me on Facebook and Twitter. It's like, well, not necessarily that, but, you know. I'm saying that you never know. Don't be afraid of getting out there and making yourself known. And I'm not talking about even just generically speaking as an actor. You gotta know people. You gotta get out there and make yourself say, hey, this is my business card. This is my art portfolio. This is my whatever. It's like maybe I've seen some fantastic cosplay already. Already. And I'm going, there's people that love knitting, sewing, and putting together that. Who's to say you couldn't make a career out of that? Or cosplay photographer blogs and all that. It's like, I want to shoot photography. I love photography. Why not? Will it make you rich? Probably not. Will it make you happy? If that's your passion, yes it will. So, that's my big soapbox. Other than that, it's like I get asked a lot, it's like, well, what do you feel about bootlegs and piracy and anime? It's like, okay, here's the, here's the harsh truth. Anime is sort of on the downswing because of piracy and low DVD sales. People are accessing the shows for free on the internet, watching the shows, and then not buying the official DVDs or the official downloads when they come out because they've already seen it for free. It's like, I understand that. Your motivation's gone. If you've already watched 50 shows, why would you buy them again if you've already seen them? Well, my, uh, my thing is to ask and implore you. It's like, okay, just know that if you did save your money and buy those official downloads or DVDs of shows, your money goes back into the system to pay those artists and creators to make more of the shows you like. Have you noticed in the past five or ten years how many shows start off awesome and then they end terribly? They run out of money. There's no more money going into the system so they can keep doing that. And I say, so the harshest critics of all would say, oh Kyle, you're just saying that because you're looking out and you're trying to cover your job. Anime dubs pay crap. They pay so little. I make hundreds more recording on video games, and cartoon stuff, and even some commercials would pay even more than all of that combined. So, no, there's no hidden motive here. I'm saying if you love the art form and want to see it survive, uh, take a look at today's, um, the way the internet's changed everything. There are official ways to view shows. You can watch shows streaming on what, Crunchyroll? And they're free, I mean, there's a paid account and stuff, but there's, you know, free versions with streaming ads and all that. It's like, okay, you take the good with the bad. You gotta watch some ads that you can't skip. Well, money is paying for the bandwidth and paying those creators so they can continue to make the next exciting episode of Dragon Ball Z, Bleach, and whatever your favorite show is nowadays. So, yeah, that's that. I don't think people are bad for downloading and all that. We all do it. We all like rip music and make CDs and um, share them with our friends and whatnot. That's what social media is. That's just changed the way business works. So this is the world we're living in. There's no way you can 100% stop piracy. But I'm not saying stop piracy. I'm saying help the creators. Help them, help them, help them, help them. And I mean, of course, we're still, NomCon's going to be here 10, 20, 30 years when your children start coming here and everything, supporting the art form, because you guys are passionate, we're passionate, we get to work in this awesome industry, and we get to travel the world and come see you guys in person. What a great benefit to doing what I'm doing. I get paid to do what I love, and I also get to travel the world and speak to you about not only the, this awesome art form, but how awesome this job is, and then whatnot, answer your questions and have one-on-one -on -one time. It's awesome. Love it. So, okay. Now, I'm staring into the sea of faces and wondering, are there questions? Yes. yes. What's that? Okay, the question was,
did my work as a DJ build up my confidence so I could do this? Yes. You know why? Because you're in a studio by your studio, like VO, like voiceover, you're in a booth surrounded by four padded walls. And I'm talking ultimately, in, in the voice acting sense, ultimately, yes, thousands of people will hear my voice. At the time I'm recording, the director and the engineer, two people, maybe three, maybe a client, a writer, producer may be in there too. So I was like, okay, on average, two to three people are in the booth. Okay, I'm cool with that. But I'm staring at a screen, dubbing anime, or I'm staring at an Excel spreadsheet with my script. Um, and in the radio booth, I could be wacky and do all these voices and talk to an audience without them actually seeing me. So yes, confidence absolutely came out of that. I came out of my shell, and now I have more confidence. I'm still actually kind of shy, believe it or not, where I was at. I'm shy. <laughs> but yeah, you get me in a big group, I'm like quiet, I'm like a sponge. I'm just observing and all that. It's like, oh, I'll throw in my two cents when asked, but I'm not going to be that guy that's always like, ha, 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 I'm funny. That's just not who I am. I'm actually really laid back to a fault. I'm like, are you stoned? <laughs> like, no, no, I'm just that laid back. If it ain't life or death, why get like, rah, rah, rah. So, that's just me. Yes, sir. Ooh, yay, mics. How about the power speed was in Dragon Ball Z? Did you have to have any freaking vocal precondition to do them? Did I, like, training? Training, because, like, to, cause, like screens take. I think for, like, with, like, go, well, no voice go for the animation LP, I think you had to have your Drewy recording the 16 3 transformations. So yeah. Like, yeah, to, like, the preparation to scream? No, you just have to scream full force as loud as you can, as loud and long as you can. Yeah, you know, if, it's, if your character on screen is screaming for 30 seconds, you can't realistically do that. That's why, again, I told that story about screaming as long as possible, taking a breath, and they start a fresh take, uh, and then record that, and then blend them two together. Uh, yeah, the very first time I screamed on Dragon Ball Z, it was a fake scream. I'm like, ah, and then Chris said it, the director goes, cut, cut, cut. When you have to scream on mic, you have to scream on mic. Don't worry about blowing the, the audio, the speakers, whatever. We'll control that on our end. Don't worry. They can make a scream or a whisper sound just as resonant in the whole audio spectrum. So I can talk like this and it will still feel like, or I could scream and it'll be just as loud. So I said, don't hold back. That's a big, that's a big thing. So yeah, the, some, it's your very first time in the booth. Harder things to do than screaming, laughing, and sounding legit. Crying. And you're like, one, two, three, your dog's dead. <laughs> you know, how do you do that? <laughs> or maybe, okay, now your character's being decapitated. Well, I remember one time when I was five, I lost my head. <laughs> what did that sound like? Oh, yeah, little thing. Anyone else in voice acting? What? Is there anyone else you love voice acting? Oh, yeah. Everyone I try out for. An actor wants to always work. I mean, that's the goal, right? I tried out for Ichigo, and then I got Aizen. That's, I'm okay with that. And sometimes I'll try out for big roles and get absolutely nothing. Or I'll get called in to do bit parts. Because I have a wide range. I can do young guys, I can sound like old guys, I can sound like demons. So I kind of help plug in the gaps. So they record the main cast, and then they'll say, hey, suddenly I get a call for things I didn't even audition for. That's good, because I'm still getting paid. I get paid the same rate as someone voicing the main role. I just don't have as many hours. It's like, so we're paid, most of us are paid hourly. Um, video games are maybe paid, or in their, well, yeah, you get paid in like two hour blocks. It's called a two hour minimum. So you're paid, even if you record for five minutes, you're paid for two hours. That's cool. But again, anime pays very low. So unless you're, you've got a lot of hours, you can quickly see that, okay, now uh, let's see. As a voice actor, you're freelance, so your demo is in the hands of multiple studios, and hopefully they will all call you at some point to record on some project. Like, okay, I'm going to go record 
Bleach and Naruto at this one studio. Oh, I'm going to do Gurren Lagann over here at this studio. Oh, then I book a video game and I have to trek all the way across town and record one time for a video game over here. And that happens, and then Bleach and Naruto are continuing, right? Like cash cows. So, every few months, go back in, record, maybe one session, two sessions, and then wait till I hear another call. Or, yeah, it's like, hey, come in. And we don't get to see the, the footage ahead of time, we don't get to practice. We go in, we know absolutely nothing until the director tells us what's going on. It's like, okay, in this episode, uh, your character dies. It's like, <laughs> really? Okay. And they'll, they'll explain the context of the episode, and then we'll get to record. And preview it in Japanese, so we can hear how loud or soft to make it. And then do it in English. And we hear the starting gun. The starting gun is not actually a gun, it's actually three beeps. Beep. Beep, beep. And on the fourth imaginary beam, that's where we start our line. And the script is broken down line by line. Sometimes a line is like, what? And sometimes it's a whole friggin' paragraph. <laughs> like, oh, we're gonna go down here, and we're gonna do that, and we're gonna stop the dragon, and we're gonna save the queen, and all this stuff. And they're all just broken down. Each line is called a loop. So we're looping. Automatic dialogue replacement. There's all these buzzwords. Dubbing is called ADR. Automatic dialogue replacement. Each line that we're recording or dubbing is a loop, even if it's a reaction. You know, the typical anime, huh? Okay, that's a loop, one loop. Yeah? Uh, my, my question. Uh, earlier you mentioned that you tried out for Ichigo originally, for Bleach. Did you ever make Did you try out for anyone else, or was it automatically strong? On Death Will May Cry, I didn't audition for anyone, I actually just got called in. Yeah. And again, that's awesome because. Hey, unanticipated money. <laughs> I, get a call and I get a call first of all, okay, are you available next Tuesday from 9 to 11? Sure, okay. You're working on a game. One more question. The scene you do is you meet Nero and Dante at two separate points in the game. Have you met Johnny Bosch and the voice actor Dante? Uh, yes, I, I've met the voice actor. See, if my character interacts obviously with other characters in a show or a game, but we don't see them at the time of the recording. We record individually. The only time we would record as a group is if it's a cartoon, domestically animated show, in which the audio is recorded first and then it's animated. So, in the case of a game, we come in and record and the animation in the game is not totally done yet. So, I get a call on, yes, I do know Johnny and I do know Ruben Langdon. Ruben Langdon actually owns his own motion capture studio. His day job is motion capturing. He's like um, oh, the main guy in Avatar, Jake Su. You know, he's his motion capture body double, basically. So he did most of the motion capture stuff, whereas Sam um, Worthington did all the acting stuff. Do you know if that uh, Ruben's in more jobs? Because his list only stretches from down to five, and then most of his other stuff is motion capture. Yeah, I mean, for, for Ruben, yeah, sometimes it's a matter of doing motion capture, which is wearing those skinny suits covered in the white dots. Um, and then uh, in other portions, maybe the actor doesn't actually do the motion capture, they'll just come in and do the voiceover for it. Ruben does both. It depends on the project, though. Um, L.A. Noir, they actually used in that game, I'm not on L.A. Noir, which it was, but they actually used a whole cast of actors and scanned their faces in so that what you see is actually their performance in game form. So they videotape the recording session, have you know the headset mic, studio quality mic on them, covered in the dots and the skin type outfit, and then they go, you know, okay, it's 1940s Hollywood, so they're wearing suits and what, they dress up in the graphics and whatnot. And that's pretty cool. That's like the next, that's something else I want to do. I've always wanted a voice in cartoons, and now that this, this whole motion capture thing is going on, it's like it's a chance for voice actors to do on-camera acting, even though it's not really on camera. It's a like virtual. <laughs> it's like virtual acting. And most of us, you know, the big perk to voice acting is that you're not biased by how you look, or how young or old, or skinny or fat, or whatnot. It doesn't matter, because it's what you can do with your voice. And in motion capture, to a degree, that's true too. It's like, well, how do you have a 50-foot giant? You can't motion capture a 50-foot man. 
well, okay, within those parameters, okay, you just cast somebody and then scale it up or whatnot. So that is possible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, old school dubs, everyone knows they're pretty laughable. If you watch, you know, Speed Racer and stuff. Now, they didn't have quick time back then, so they had to, like, watch the tape, and they had no time cues, no beeps, no anything. They just had to kind of watch it and hope that it syncs up. And in the case of Speed Racer and uh, Robotech and all that, I mean, you're taking a raw Japanese show and creating something all new about in Battle of the Planets, too, that was Gotcha Man in Japanese. And because Star Wars was so popular, they changed the plot of the entire show <laughs> and hired a company to animate little things here and there and then throw it all together and they made a sci-fi show out of it. It sounds like it's in, how is that possible? But hey, man, Robotech is three completely unrelated shows. And this genius who's no longer with us, Carl Masick, I think he's a genius, for taking these three and crafting a great story with great characters, fusing those three shows together and doing all that, and, and readapting it and re, you know, shaping it and remarketing it for you know, the Western world and all that. Uh, all right, more questions. Uh, yeah, so he's saying I played Wario in There Will Be Brawl. There Will Be Brawl is a webisode series, live action. It's like a dark parody, kind of Sopranos-esque. You know, there's a mafia, I'm a mobster, Wario. So, um, yeah, uh, that was like 10 or 11 episodes. It was recorded about a year or two ago, filmed rather. And I got asked by the director, Matt, um, I didn't have to audition, he just says, you want to play Wario in my webisode series? Like, yeah, this sounds great. Coming from the guy who just does voice work. So, of course I want to try some on-camera stuff. And it was just as challenging as I feared. It's like, okay, well, I don't get to have my script in front of me all the time. So that was kind of difficult. But, I mean, the great makeup, great cast, great crew, and, and to do something. There will be Brawl. Check it out online. It's really cool. If you're a big Nintendo fan, there's a lot of winks and nods to that whole Brawl universe. I mean, everybody's in there. Not necessarily a big character, but you know, he looks like, oh, wow, nice. And he also, Matt was also Ganondorf in that. And Matt was lucky, super lucky, because he voices Tigra on the new Thundercats. Have you seen the new Thundercats? It's so cool. I had no interest in the 80s version. And I, I grew up through all that, and I'm like, eh. But now I think retro is cool. <laughs> like, Transformers back then, I was like, ah, Transformers. And now I'm like, Transformers. Now that I've met Peter Cullen, like, transform, I'm roll up. I met Peter Cullen, he's awesome. I met Frank Welker, Megatron, awesome. I told these guys, I said, I'm so honored to meet you, you are legends. I'm gonna work with you one day. And they were very, very motivational. And it's like, yeah, I'm sure we will, man. It's great to see you. It's like, so, this is so cool. Can you imagine meeting someone from your childhood <laughs> that you watched on cartoons and all that stuff? Who, what? Veronica Taylor, yeah, exactly. Has she already had a panel? She, she got here at like 5 in the morning. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, yeah. But yeah, Veronica is super psyched to be here. So, uh, yeah, and then I get told all the time, it's like, you were my childhood, man. Next time on Dragon Ball Z. And then the most cynical of people might say, it's like, I hate the narrator. I said, why? I was just doing my job. They told me to sound like that. Like, well, no, it's just because when you hear the narrator, you know the episode's over. <laughs> or just beginning. Actually, yeah. Or the fact that nothing is going to happen over 75 episodes. <laughs> <laughs> will, the, will the world be destroyed? Yeah, probably. <laughs> Tune in next year. I mean, next time. Uh, Dragon Ball Z. More questions. Adventures in Voice Acting, a very inspirational DVD available now, uh, where they all, like a hundred different voice actors, tell their stories about how they got in and all that. Yes, go ahead. When did I do that? To do that project? I was approached by the studio, Bang Zoom, who is where, where they recorded uh, Gurren Lagann, 
and they recently did, I was on Tekken, uh, Blood Vengeance, which is the new CG movie, it was uh, Kazuya and that, uh, so, yeah. um, but they actually approached me and said, yes, we're doing this project where we're interviewing voice actors about how they got into the business and any weird tales or funny stories or whatnot, so they spent an hour with a hundred different actors, and they spent an hour with me too, I had just moved to LA. Ah, yeah, that's, that's the big thing, because it came out, and they said, we'll make the other two volumes or whatever, we'll, we'll make more if there's enough sales. And I think the sales have not been quite what they were hoping. So, because a lot of people just work for free for that, and you know, resources cost money, and all that. So, but if you want to talk about an inspirational DVD, and, and hear the stories from all these different actors, Steve Bloom, Wendy Lee, Crispin Freeman, there's so many people, a lot of the Texas voice actors too. No one in Canada, they didn't talk to anyone in Canada. I wish they had done more volume so they could talk to Scott McNeil. Uh, yeah, Brad, uh, Brad Swale, Kirby Murrow. I mean, there's so many talented people. This, this industry is amazing because we're, I'm surrounded by so many awesome, awesome people that, um, you know, it's, it's not like the on-camera world, where you hear the stories about everyone's fake and stabbed you in the back and all that, and everyone's just trying to, like, you stole that role from me, blah, 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 blah. And I mean, and yes, in voice acting, yeah, there's certain voice types. Some are the young hero types, and they get cast as that all the time, like Johnny Bosch, Yuri Lowenthal. Why do you hear them over and over again? Because they're awesome at what they do. I get, I want to say typecast is not necessarily a negative word, because I'm happy to work. But I get called in, not normally to be a Ryu or a Gohan or a whatever. I get typically called in to do the, the bit part characters. It's like, okay, well today I'm a, I'm a witch, a goblin, a demon, a, you know, a cook, and whatever, a soldier. That's still an awesome job, you know? It's like, wow. It's like, how different can I make this? That's why voice acting is so exciting to me, because it's a new and different challenge every time I go into the booth. And even if I go in... You know, twice a week, three times, all working on the same project. If I go in and just like, oh, here's another Naruto, believe it episode, or whatever. We haven't done that in years, by the way. We killed that catchphrase. Thanks to the fans. Um, but yeah, even if I work on the same show five days in a row, it'll be different lip sync challenges. You know, sometimes it'll be a breeze and I can do it in one take. Other things will be like, this is going to take 50 takes. Because this character is doing this big soliloquy, this huge paragraph, this big speech, and it just blah, 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 blah. awkward pause, pause, blah, 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 pause, blah, 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 blah. and there's no time to rehearse it, there's no time to memorize it. Different challenge every time, and then in between, while the footage is queuing up, you're you're cracking jokes and being highly inappropriate, and your director and your engineer are cracking jokes too, and everyone's having fun. And if it's a cartoon, then you have the whole cast there, cracking jokes, having fun. And then as soon as that mic's and the red light's on, recording! And we're, we're serious, we're in the zone, we're doing the job we're trained to do. Boom. Cut. Alright. And then, ha 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 ha, laugh. And then suddenly, alright, martinis! It's, you know, five o'clock. Five o'clock somewhere, right? I guess it's not martinis here, it's more like a pint. <laughs> Which I'll do later. <laughs> That's early in the morning. I don't drink pints in the morning, do you? You wait, you wait, you wait till at least noon. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I guess so. The bridge series. I'm actually wearing an abridged shirt. 1006. No, I'm number one. Um, there, I've, I've talked to other actors that are like, really against it. It's like, oh, they're taking copyright material and blah, 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 blah. It's like, but it's it's a parody. And that's a gray area. I mean, they had their stuff ripped off of YouTube over and over because technically it's violating copyright terms, blah, 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 blah. But <coughs> you don't get, if Toye or these studios pulled down those videos and actually sued them for what they're doing, you would see such an outrage from the fan base that suddenly they would revolt and not buy any more products from that studio. So it's like, you don't bite the hand that feeds you. Remember years ago, Napster, when Metallica, Lars Ulrich, was like, we're going to sue our fans for downloading our music. And that worked out well. <laughs> so while technically, by the letter of the law, they could go after and sue them, I don't 
see why they would, especially in this economy. Who has money? Why, do you, why are you suing someone who has no money? I think they're funny. I think they're really talented. Red versus Blue does the same thing. They're basically fan dubbing a video game. And Bungie loves it. I mean, as long as people, you know, I mean, you can't sit there and take that material and charge for it. That I'll step in and say, okay, well, they can go make their t-shirts and make money legit. But the second you start charging, taking that dubbed episode and selling it and you're profiting yourself, that's not your material. It's like, but I wrote the script. It's like, but the source video is not your material. It's okay to distribute it for free. See, it gets complicated. You know, it's like, ah. Oh. And yeah, admittedly, there are some people in my industry that are very against what they're doing. I personally think they're funny. I think they're entertaining. And as long as they're not profiteering from that actual product, then I don't think they're overstepping their bounds. That's just my opinion. I'm, I'm for parodies. I mean, Weird Al makes a living parodying songs. And he has the blessing of most of the artists. The only one he did was Amish Paradise from Coolio. He found out that Coolio was mad and he didn't like that and blah, 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 blah. And then there was a chance that his Lady Gaga thing was not going to be on the new album, but that was because of uh, her PR person said, no, 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 she doesn't approve. Turns out she loves it. I hope she fired that person. <laughs> it's like, communicate, people. Come on, talk. Yes. Yeah. Very first anime, and I did know uh, I was, it was anime, because that word didn't exist in the 70s. It was probably Speed Racer. Uh, back in the late 70s, early 80s, the buzzword was Japanimation. <laughs> <laughs> Probably politically incorrect, but, and then, wow, I don't remember where, when the word anime came out, uh, and, I, and I know it's controversial when some people say, oh, anime is not cartoons, but you know what, anime is animation, cartoons is animation, Pixar is animation, DreamWorks is animation, it's all different forms of animation. Um, so, I personally don't see why people get so offended when it's like, well, I, I was dubbing this Japanese cartoon. Because I guess a cartoon could be viewed as, oh, that's a negative stigma because a cartoon is automatically for children. Well, as we all know, as fans of anime, not all anime is for children. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. Um, so we exist in a world where there, that is a, it's an art form to be enjoyed by all ages. You know, we're also in the day of Family Guy, Robot Chicken. That's, that's a cartoon of sorts. It's stop motion, but you know, it still requires voice acting as opposed to on camera acting. It's just a different format. But Family Guy, Futurama and all that, that's not for kids. I don't think it's negative to call it a cartoon. Or the fact that a cartoon is just a buzzword saying, okay, well, it's made in America. But, okay, anime is animation made in Japan. And now there's this hybrid of, well, okay, the new Thundercats. Studio 4C, an anime studio, is animating Thundercats. So if you watch Thundercats, it is technically a cartoon. It's recorded in America with the whole cast, but the animation is actually done in Japan. And boom, there it is. So it's like, I don't know. I mean, Avatar The Last Airbender, that's not anime. That's a cartoon. That's a cartoon that looks like anime. Batman the Animated Series, heavily inspired by anime. But it's not anime. Teen Titans, I'm a huge Teen Titans fan. That has tons of anime winks and nods. You know, the sweat beads and the bubbles and the chibi heads and all that. But it's a cartoon. I think it blurs the line, and I'm fine with that. I don't think cartoon is a bad word, myself. Yeah. I, I'm, all, I'm, I'm 42 and I still watch cartoons. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I love cartoons. And it's also three minutes to the top of the hour, and I see people spilling in for the next panel. So we're going to wrap up so that 
those of you in the audience that want to get out and go about your day can, and so these kind folks can take your seat. And if you want to, uh, who is next? Are you next, Mr. Caribo? Little Caribo is next. can just pass the wand to you and take over. I think actually Darren's going to come back in and do the introductions. But um, thank you all for coming to the Q&A. I've got more panels this weekend at three. Myself and Veronica Taylor will be signing autographs. So uh, take your pictures and walk out. I'm just going to be walking around. So if you want to come say hi, I'll sign stuff and take pictures. So thank you all for coming to NomCon. Little Karibo's next. Thank you.